Welcome back to Talk Jamaica here on Talk Jamaica Radio. Again, we are streaming live at talkjamaicaradio.com and caribridims.com. We now commence our discussion segment. It appears that things are still not well within the ranks of the opposition Jamaica Labour Party. Talk Jamaica producer Volney Barrett now tells us more. Speculation remains rife that the leader of the opposition and the Jamaica Labour Party, Andrew Holness, does not enjoy the full support of all 20 remaining opposition members of Parliament. Mr. Holness and leader of opposition business in the House of Representatives, Derek Smith, emerged from last Friday's six-hour meeting at the JLP's Belmont Road headquarters, insisting that discussions were frank and spirited. Mr. Holness expressed that this was indicative that the party was still healthy. Both men denied media reports that Mr. Holness's future as party leader was at the heart of the heated discussions. Earlier this year, Mr. Holness's credibility as leader was being questioned in the aftermath of the so-called Senate seat saga. In the aftermath of that saga, Mr. Holness survived attempts to remove him as leader. Mr. Holness, who assumed leadership of the JLP in late 2011, also survived a challenge from Audley Shaw, the party's current finance spokesman, in 2013 defeating him with 2,704 votes to Shaw's 2,012 votes. There have been reports that some JLP members are jittery because some of the party's financial backers have refused to provide any funding as long as Mr. Holness remains leader of the JLP. Mr. Holness has indicated that he will not step aside from the party as he is committed to moving the country from poverty to prosperity through robust growth and the provision of jobs, among other measures. He insists that the JLP is the only party that can return stronger economical growth to the country. But, with the current debacle bedeviling the JLP, can Mr. Holness survive? Will he be able to unite the JLP in time for the next general election? Only time will tell. Another meeting is to be had this Tuesday to iron out the issues. Reporting for Talk Jamaica Radio, I am Valny Barrett. Thank you, Valny Barrett. To discuss the issues with us this afternoon, we are joined by policy researcher and lecturer Jermaine Nair and research consultant in the area of politics and political analyst Paul Boyne. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Welcome. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to your listeners. Good afternoon. All right, Jermaine, let me start with you. Your immediate reaction to this development? My immediate reaction is that the Jamaica Labour Party seems to be sinking itself further into dilemma mm -hmm. by trying at this late stage to remove Andrew Holness as the leader. And when I say late stage, I mean in terms of how close it is to the elections that are to come. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sure we'll talk more about it, but that is my initial reaction. Mm -hmm. Paul Bourne, when you heard news of this... Uh alleged ouster, what did you think? Well, on, on, on my journey, my, my, my thoughts were once more. Mm -hmm. And once more meant that the matter has not been settled. Mm -hmm. That was that was my initial reaction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and let me ask you, sorry, Austin, let me uh, ask you, uh, Jermaine, because I, I, I made a point of it earlier, and I, it, it bothers me. Mr. Holness, by the polls, Yes is the most popular politician in the country. Can you think of anywhere else in the world where the leader of a political party is perceived as the most popular, yet still there are these rumblings to get rid of him? All right. Uh, before I respond to that, I, I don't think Paul and I are differing because mm -hmm. I do agree that once more. Uh, mm -hmm. But back to what you've asked. Certainly I can't pinpoint anywhere in the world where that is the case. In fact, that is part of the dilemma that they're facing because on the one hand, on the national scale, the polls are showing that he is indeed the most popular politician. And let's not forget that Portia Simpson Miller has been the most popular uh, politician in our history in terms of favorability rating. Uh, so that's on the national level. But on the party level, he's not enjoying the same level of popularity. Now, mm -hmm. that is a major issue when you weigh how it is they intend to win an election. Because on the one hand, it is alleged that because of him, financiers are not putting in the kinds of cash that they used to. And it takes cash to win an election. 
But on the other hand, it also takes a popular leader to win an election. So you have infighting, and the truth is, you may have a number of um, members of parliament who are saying, well, he needs to go. But when you check the base of the Jamaica Labour Party, is this the resounding response? I'm not sure about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, let me ask you, um, Jermaine, because you did indicate that at this late stage, they are trying to remove Mr. Holness. Do you believe, and given all that we are hearing and all the allegations of getting financing and so on, do you believe that... Going into the election, then Mr. Holness should remain. I do believe so, and mm -hmm. I believe so for two reasons. Mr. Mm -hmm. Holness has not had a full term as opposition leader for him to run the course, right? One, though he may have lost two elections, and those were major blows. That's one. The other thing is that at this late stage, for you to remove him as leader, two things will come up. One, further disunity, right, at the base of the party. And two, if it is that he's removed, and we are, we are hearing that it is a possible Shaw ascension that would take place. If Mr. Shaw is put in as a Labour leader, mm -hmm. then I'm almost sure that the People's National Party would call an election immediately because Shaw seems to be one of those people who can really draw Sister P. Stone for want of a better word, and with mm -hmm. his ability to whip up the masses, I am almost sure that the People's National Party would not allow him the time in order to build that support. I want I want to go back to, to, to what um, uh, Germany has said, but do you believe that then Mr. Shaw has the ability then to unite the party going into an election? Mm -hmm. So, I like German's observation, but I, I want to look at something, and it, it is clear to me that, and I said it long, long ago, that I do not think Andrew Olness is the best person to run the GLP in terms of winnability. Mm -hmm. No, German actually sort of alluded to that. No, Shaw is a better person in terms of an organizer, on, and that is critical to winning any election, and critical being a part of a political institution. Mm -hmm. No, you need to sort of look at the difference between an Audley and uh, 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 Andrew Olness. Audley has that sort of an appeal, and Andrew Olness has not up to now demonstrated his ability to organize his, 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 his party, put things on the ground, and actually get things running. No, when one looks at where Jamaica is in terms of, Jamaica has not come too far in terms of people still wanting a leader to... to that, uh, that, 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 that dynamic leader to get them motivated, get them stimulated, get things on, 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 on them going, pumping them up. Now, given that Audley has that sort of charisma and those sort of characteristics, it is better for Audley to vie against the, drum, the, the people that party than an Andrew. Now, where are we in terms of the, 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 the fundamental base of JLP with Audley becoming a leader, I am not sure. Now, will the people of Jamaica say vote for an Audley versus an Andrew, or will those persons who are, who are Labour Party supporters decide not to vote because they are disenchanted? Now, that is going to actually play in any election, and the People's National Party, as Jeremy alluded to, would more likely call an election earlier than later because it's Audley to be given a chance to put things into motion. It's highly likely that there could be a better contest in terms of who will win as against Andrew. Mm -hmm. Paul, I hear you, and, and from what I'm hearing from it, it seems to me that we're expecting the leader of a political party to be all things to all people. Isn't it a better strategy to say, okay, Mr. Shaw, you have unique talents. How can you use those talents to shore up the leader where he falls flat and, and, and undoubtedly the leader has talents that he will also use. What about the idea of coming together as a team? But it seems to me that we're expecting all things from the leader. No, it, it's not a way to say all things from the leader. But we need to understand critically the political landscape of Jamaica. Jamaica's political landscape has always revolved around 
a dynamic leader, always. And that has not changed. That brought Buster into power, Norman into power, um, and you can name the other person, Edward Siago, no, Michael Malley, P.J. Patterson, Porsche, of Vince Miller. Now, that has not changed. The people have not changed. And because that remains a constant in, in, in the dynamics, people still will actually vote for a leader, and by voting for a leader, you're voting for a party, which has mm -hmm. not changed. Now, it would be good for us to actually move away from that sort of political culture, but it will not be done tomorrow morning or next week within the dynamics of what obtains today. Mm -hmm. may, may I respond to that? Sure. I, I have to agree with Paul regarding the political culture that we have in this country because it, it really has been about a leader-centric sort of dynamism. But also, what has been shown historically is that the Jamaican Labour Party doesn't seem to coalesce around um, a particular individual. When we compare them with the People's National Party, what has been seen is a kind of individualistic culture whereby, you know, it is about me and I want the power, you want the power, and I'm, I'm trying to wrestle the power from you versus the People's National Party who said, look, this is the vision, this is the person we're working with. We might not like this person, but in order to get into power, this is what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, wait, Paul, from where you sit now, um, does the party have any real chance at electoral victory with Andrew Holness at the helm? What, 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 what a question you're to ask me. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, that, that is the, the substance of, of, of the contention, whether or not he can take the victory. I, I do not see a, I do not see a Andrew Holness winning the election. L let me actually go in retrospect. When Andrew became the leader of the Jamaican Labour Party, People thought because young persons or youth were supporting him, mm -hmm. he would have actually won the election. That turned out not to be the case. I think what the JLP had not looked at is that fundamentally about 70% of persons are PMP sympathizers or poor PMP individuals. Now, it means that at any point in time for the Jamaica Labour Party to win the election, it means that the PMP sympathizers would have to vote for the Jamaica Labour Party. And... When Andrew was relying solely on the youth vote, many of the youth weren't nominated to, to, to vote, numerated to vote. Mm -hmm. And therefore, he did not brought in that favor that he thought he would have actually got. No, the reality is, the, the youth vote has sort of remained the same. The number mm -hmm. of youth that have actually been included on the voters list have somewhat remained the same. It means that Andrew would have lost worse than before if he were to go against the PMP and the, the, the current stock of person within the People's National Party. Now, if we were to take out Andrew and put in Audley Shaw, would the dynamics change? Depending on how much time the PMP gives Audley Shaw to organize his base. But you see, therein, therein lies another interesting scenario. Because on the one hand, we're saying that, boy, you know, Andrew is almost dead weight. But on the other hand, when you think about the said PNP sympathizers, Paul, one has to ask which of the two, Holness or Shaw, would be able to pull on those sympathizers. I mean, at the end of the day, while Shaw is able to whip up the JLP masses, and, you know, I said it earlier, will he be able to pull on the undecided and the PNP sympathizers versus a wholeness. You know, is it that in the last election, wholeness simply took it for granted and so he didn't reach out enough? Mm -hmm. So therein lies another dilemma that this is. Good. Mm -hmm. Very good point, Jermaine. But we, what we, should, we could look at is people know oddly from in terms of his, his, his ability to do things long ago. No, mm -hmm. wholeness does not have that. Mm -hmm. And a number of the persons who are sympathizers to the People's National Party or undecided individuals are more likely to listen to what Audley has to offer in terms of where they see him going, where they see their lives going, and that, in terms of, is able to generate and motivate inside of them to decide to actually go for him. Now, we need to understand that when Andrew became leader of the party, what, where was Andrew in, term, in, in, in terms of his ministerial portfolio, or where was Andrew in terms of 
his 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 his, his portfolio, and that was in education. Andrew did not do well in terms of that ministry. I want you to understand clearly that that ministry, Ministry of Education, holds a substantial number of persons who are PMP sympathizers. Hold, hold on, Paul. Do I hear you saying that he did not do well at that ministry? I'm not well, sure I agree with that. No, I, I would not agree with that. In fact, conventional wisdom says he did very well. That's one of the reasons he was catapulted to the position he now holds. No, he did not do well. That, that was another matter. How you went in that post was a totally different matter. No, what I'm saying is that so that ministry with a number of individuals in that ministry who were decide, who were disgruntled because I happened to have actually done, done some work in the, the period in which he was there as, and, and persons were totally satisfied with what he was doing as minister. And what they tried to do is to cooperate with him in the latter part of it. It means that a number of persons who are teachers would be associated with police, would associate with a number of other individuals. And that in itself actually sampled Andrew. What he tried to do is to rely on the the, the thought or the idea that young people were going for him and therefore it meant that he could have actually gotten the, 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 the nudge in, in, the, in the election. That did not obtain, and I don't think it will ever obtain. No, Audley, on the other hand, the People's National Party is aware of Audley's ability to do things, and they must take him more serious than an Andrew that they're not going to take as seriously as an Audley. And in the event the PMP is actually thinking of winning the next election, which I think they are going to do, they will think seriously as to the timing if oddly what was the place as the, 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 the person in charge. You know, you know, Paul and Jermaine, I'm listening to you, and if we're going to use this this idea that uh, you know Andrew, you know, stumbled along at the education ministry, let's say I grant you that, Paul, I, I would I would find it amazing if the PMP is more afraid of Shaw than Holness. Because yes, Mr. Shaw can fire up a crowd. But what is in the PMP's arsenal in terms of shots that they can take at a Shaw versus a Holness? I would imagine that there's far more ammunition to unload on Shaw than there is on Holness. And in fact, one of the critical issues I think that will form the a part of this election will be the economy. Now, you know how that narrative will go. He took us to the brink of economic collapse. <laughs> so, I, I, no, I, no, I, I'm really listening let me, to you. Let, if, let me respond. If, if, if we're going to assess respond. it on their, their competence as a minister, certainly Mr. Shaw would be in a deep, deeper end of the, of, of the swimming pool than wholeness would be. Let, let, let me respond to that. Um, yes. Firstly, I disagree with the notion that Andrew's performance was, was poor at the education ministry. Um, perhaps Paul may have some inside information, but I think generally on a national scale, wholeness as part of the Golden Cabinet was seen as one of the bright, bright sparks. And so in that regard, I'm not sure if more, if more could be used against him. I would agree with you that um, more would be used against Shaw mm -hmm. because of a lot of things that have been said and done over the years. Now, at the, at, 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 in the final analysis, what we need to do is to ensure, right, and I can speak to either of them, that for Mr. Holness, he needs to learn how to portray himself as more um, credible. He mm -hmm. needs to connect more with the people, and I think he has a better chance of connecting with the PNP sympathizers. But overall, either way, I agree with Paul that the next election will belong to the PNP. That, that's the sad part of it is what, what we'll have to weigh is the extent to which more damage is done. They have 21 seats now, the Jamaica Labour Party. It's whether or not they'll have more or less. Mm -hmm. so, so let me, so am I hearing you then saying that even if the Jamaica Labour Party was to go ahead and change leadership, they still would not be able to win the next election? That's absolutely right. And again, it's about the timing. If mm -hmm. this had been done, if this had been done, let's say in 2013, for example, when Shaw challenged wholeness, if Shaw had won, Shaw would have had enough time to build up the support and he would have had time to reunite the party. At this late stage, there is not enough time between now and the election for them to reunite the party, one, 
and two for sure to get on the road and reach out to the undecided, the uncommitted, the disenchanted, the apathetic, whatever category we want to put them in. Mm -hmm. So what needs to happen is that wholeness needs to run his course. The whole issue of money can be sorted out, I think, through the fundraisers in the party. I mean, you take a Daryl Vaz, for example. Daryl Vaz is known as a mastermind when it comes down to fundraising. What ought to be done is that they try to raise the funds, run the election, and thereafter they can do an assessment as to whether or not they want to vote. vote I, want, I, want to to in, I want to interject something, Vermeer. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to the GLP in Birmingham, which maybe you aren't necessarily aware of, is mm -hmm. that Mr. Holness's stance in terms of sidelining Daryl Vaz and mm -hmm. sidelining James Robertson has mm -hmm. critically ampered and mm -hmm. destroyed that money base that he would have actually pulled in. Mm -hmm. So when you speak about a Daryl Vaz, mm -hmm. he does not have the full support of Daryl Vaz to get the, mon the money back as an asset. That's what is happening to the party. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. the fact that he does not have them persons assent is better to go with Audley Shaw because Audley Shaw has on board with him Daryl Vaz, James Roberts, and many of the other persons in the party that are the mm -hmm. strong money backers. Mm -hmm. But you know, and that well, is where the problem is with, 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 with Andrew. And here is the issue I accept that he does not have their support. However, the party as a group needs to decide what it is that they're going to sacrifice for um, getting power back in their That's hands. That's my thinking too. Because they have to decide, are we going to allow this, this unity to further divide us into the, the, the opposition um, category? Or are we going to decide, you know what, let us put this aside, let us run a unified campaign, get the money and move forward. And again, it comes back to what is done differently in the PNP versus the JLP. The PNP, had they been in this position, would understand that, look, power is more important than personality. And they would deal with the power issue first and then deal with the personality issue. So but I do agree that he doesn't have their support, but they need to decide what they want. But your, your answer is clear. The difference between how things are done in the JLP and the PNP is where the answer is and will continue to be. Mm -hmm. Because it, 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 it appears as though culture has not changed substantially in the JLP. Mm -hmm. That's the reality that they have been losing many times. Now, I find it difficult to understand why somebody will be losing so often and continue on the same path. But the, the cultural part that they have actually taken, no, right. I am not sure they prefer to lose than to win. All right, gentlemen, our producer is giving us the wrap-up signal, but I want to find out from you in, in, in less than 30 seconds, what do you think is going to happen come when they meet next Tuesday? If you were to make a prediction. If I were to make a prediction, I would say it's going to be more Bangarang. Uh, <laughs> as to the outcome of that Bangarang, I really can't say all I can say is that if it is that they decide to approach the Governor General to say, look, the majority of the opposition members of Parliament do not think that Mr. Holness is the best person to be opposition leader, then that would be the wrong path, especially mm -hmm. in light of timing. My, my issue is the timing of it, the closeness mm -hmm. to the election. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I'm thinking good sense would prevail and the members would actually say they are going with Andrew because... Otherwise, it's a clear indication of one more loss if they want to go that route. All right, gentlemen, listeners, we're talking there with Jermaine Nair. He's a policy researcher and lecturer. And Paul Boyne is a research consultant in the area of politics and political analysis. Gentlemen, thank you for having joined us here on Talk Jamaica. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me.